Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Jacob Cooper's album release party. We're just getting ourselves organized a little bit, and I'm so happy to be here with everyone. Um, here being a strange thing right now, since uh, in uh, the last few months, we've all been so isolated. Listening to this album again to write the program notes and getting ready for the show today made me think a lot about the collaboration with Jacob on the album and leading up to it, um, especially because Jacob had really generously come into my class at NYU to test out some of the string effects and ripple the sky with a bunch of my students in the uh, performing with electronics class at NYU. And so in in different ways, the album makes me think about being with all my students and working one-on-one -on -one with Jacob and being really inside the sound in a way that's really close. Um, and in other ways, Jacob's process in terms of working with people individually and recording layers also lends itself to this kind of one-on-one -on -one and more alone nature. Um, and so as we've seen from some of the reviews already that have come out, it's hard to listen to this without putting it into the lens of this idea of, of loneliness or the time of COVID-19, especially because so many artists are struggling right now. And as we see going through the album, these themes are quite universal. These themes of struggling and being alone and dealing with how we wound others or are wounded in the world are, are things that are ongoing. And we've had a moment right now to really, really reflect on those individually in the world. And so I think it's a beautiful time to kind of come together and be thinking about this as a whole. Um, so I'd love to introduce Jacob himself, the man of the evening. Um, you don't need to hear me talk about the album too more because you have my my notes, but um, Jacob, thank you so much for including me in this in so many different ways. Of course, thank you, Anne, for for emceeing, leading the charge here. Um, and I also need to thank you and your students from NYU for for helping me out with that. That was that was totally uh, a wonderful opportunity for me. So so thank you for. Oh my gosh, happen. they were like, "Who cares about you? <laughs> Jacob Cooper's going to come do something with us." <laughs> that's that's very nice of you. That's very nice. Um, yeah. So, uh, uh, how is how has it been going um, being at home? Is it exciting to think about being together with everybody again for this album release? Or? Yeah, it's good. You know, during tech, we just did a tech about an hour ago, and uh, it was great to see everyone together. And it made me realize that you know some of the poets haven't met some of the performers, and I'd always dreamed of that happening, and uh, it's happening at least virtually now. So, so we have that going on. Um, but I am I'm looking forward to this happening. You know, it's obviously we would have preferred to have a, a real release show. Um, we will eventually at some point make that happen, but um, for now, hopefully uh, this will be interesting or enjoyable for people. Yeah, and I think it's a nice way for the audience also to be closer to the performers than they normally would. And I'd like to remind everybody that if they want to, they can ask questions throughout either on the Facebook page um, where New M is streaming the video or on the YouTube page. I'll be checking those for questions throughout. And, you know, after a release show, you wouldn't necessarily get to ask artists, all the artists, so many individual questions. So in some ways, this format opens that up for more interaction. Um, and as you said, for us, I'll be meeting each other. So that's really nice, too. Cool. Um, shall we invite Dora in and yeah. get, jump into the first piece? Yeah. Um, so Hi joining us now. Hi Dora. Hi, Dora. This is Dora Malik, who's a brilliant poet, and it's so wonderful to finally meet you um, in person, or in in e person <laughs> over uh, Zoom. Um, uh, could you talk a little bit about how you uh, your collaboration with Jacob in the past, um, and and how you your history of working together? Absolutely. So we collaborated on Jacob's uh, previous album um, on the track Unspun. And for that, it was sort of building off of a haiku. So we had like the kernel of a text and then I sort of went outward from there. So the idea of Unspun very much sort of the title described the process. Um, for this, it was different because this piece and Jacob jump in at any point, um, this piece on the album is part of a larger project called Threnos for the Throat, um, 
which uh, Jacob had had conceived of as, as a much larger piece having to do with um, with the death of animals um, on on such a large anonymous scale um, as, as we experience it or don't experience it um, all the time. And so I don't know if those themes are necessarily uh, immediately relevant if you're you know if you're reading the text or or listening, um, but this piece expiation on this track was um, kind of part of this larger um, sort of monologue about ritual and trying to 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 reckon with things done in the past that kind of can't be undone. Given that it was written for this larger context and and also because the text was specifically written for the collaboration with Jacob, right? It wasn't pr written previously, you worked on it together. Um, how was it working with him to write a text that you knew would be heard versus the way that you usually work if you're writing um, for the page? Um, obviously language is something that's um, that can be audible, but um, was that really different in your process or is it similar? Yeah. It is. I. I think. Um, I don't know if the if the final piece uh, ends up being that different. I mean, someone someone reading this, I'd kind of leave that up to somebody else to say, "Whoa, this is nothing like your poetry," or "Oh, this is very similar to your poetry." The process itself is very different, um, and I consider working um, with Jacob very good practice for my ego uh, because uh, he's not mean. It's not that, but uh, I promise. But, it doesn't um, boost your ego. You mean it cuts your ego down. It cuts right? my <laughs> ego down. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's a humbling experience for me um, because poets aren't really used to, to uh, ha you know, unless you're in like a workshop, a classroom setting, you're kind of on your own. You don't even really have the experience that, you know, a journalist or, or even a fiction writer at a certain point does for the most part of an editor saying, well, cut this down or we need this word count or that. So um, I work a lot with constraints in my poetry, whether it's like, you know, traditional form, rhyme and meter, or whether it's self-made constraints or strange ones like the anagram or something like that. So I'm used to being constrained, but I'm not used to being constrained by another person. Um, so to have Jacob as this kind of um, this interactive constraint is is really exciting, but a very, very different experience to have Jacob saying to me, mm, we need a different syllable count or um, can you have a different sound here that's not as um, sort of tongue twisting to sing in this particular line. So it really presents a whole different set of challenges that I I loved. I mean, I loved enough to kind of come back and, and do it all over again on an even bigger scale. And I think it's cool. worth me saying how, how spoiled I feel with it all, because, you know, the traditional, the traditional way a composer works with poetry that's already been written and they have to fit their music around the number of syllables and the, the, with the way that it's uh, been written. But I can say, oh, can you change that for me, Dora? And then, and then she will. And that's like something that I've gotten a little too used to, I think. And I uh, feel very, very privileged to have. I really love that. Um, that even though obviously we're respectful of, of the finished piece and the thing that we're creating together, we're not, I don't feel like we're treating any particular line as kind of overly precious. I think it's really good to think of it as, as malleable up until the last minute. Yeah, and uh, kind of related to both of those, and maybe it's time for us to rope Jody in on this, um, but Jacob, did you ever sing through any of the lines or talk through them? Uh, how did you figure out what things, because given that feedback back and forth, how did you know what, mm -hmm. what you felt would work or not, or what was too much of a tongue twister, or what were those things that were uh, yeah, that's a good question. I you were asking? I usually just sing through stuff really poorly on my own. Um, <laughs> and uh, I think a couple of times where there was like particularly difficult communication, I would actually send Dora what I had sung and hopefully she threw that out because <laughs> I don't want, yeah, don't be showing anyone that. Um, so I had to say like, we want this syllable here. And so I'd make up nonsense words and say, we want it to be this syllable and this sort of rhythm. Can you fit something where I could actually, this could actually be sung in that time. Um, but yeah, maybe Jody does have more to say about that. So Jacob, I feel like your version of it is like a whole different kind of performance art. You know? uh, it's, it's... Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. What's up, Jody? Hello, hello. Good Happy to see release. you. Thank you. You as well. So Jody, I, I realized just in our tech, uh, this is the first time you're actually meeting, e-meeting Dora. Is that correct? A absolutely. It's, it's, it's very exciting. Nice, nice to hear your voice because I've only read your words. 
you too, and 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 I have heard your voice plenty, uh, but I, you know, and and loved every minute of it. But it's very different just to be chatting with you like this. So yeah, it's great. So what was it like for you, J Jody, approaching this text? I think the initial thing that you worked on was some of the drone elements in this. Um, did you already know what the text was as you were starting to work with Jacob, or did that come later? Um, like how much of the the process were you aware of as the piece was getting written? I think, uh, and Jacob can correct me if I'm wrong, but but initially when Jacob and I talked about him writing a piece for me, it was a, supposed to be about like eight, seven or eight minutes. Um, and to my delight, it, it ended up being this kind of 16, 17 minute piece. Um, so I think I, I got bits and pieces of it throughout the process. I believe the first thing I recorded was just um, what ended up becoming the the drone track that Jacob manipulated. Um, and it was just the word voice on several different pitches that then he could manipulate. Um, and so that, that was a, a fascinating way of, of starting with my own voice, but then on the word voice and then taking it and distorting it in such a way that you don't know it sounds like me, but you kind of can't tell how artificial it is or not. Um, and then I think a lot of the text appeared throughout um, and we were still sort of figuring out what to do with the ending of the piece. Um, so the ending of the piece occurred later after we discovered, oh, this jam section actually needs a melody and also me like hitting a trash can that Jacob samples. That was important. In the, I in the trash yeah. can, yeah, the trash yeah. can solved solved it, and we knew suddenly knew what the ending was. And right, gave Jacob I remember that we were in you were in Iceland, and uh, I flew over there, and it was limited time because of family stuff. And then you were sick, so we couldn't actually record you singing. But we had this trash can moment that like totally transformed the end of that piece. And that like, that was a big breakthrough. So it was, and I got to see Iceland. So that was, that was awesome yeah. too. Yeah, twist my arm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Um, maybe that's a nice segue. Jacob, do you want to show your screen a little and show some yeah. of the vocal effects? And then yeah, so, and I'll just preface things. this by saying too, I don't, I'm not looking at the comments now, but uh, we, you know, we thought we could do a release party where we just kind of listen to everything, but we figure people can just do that on Spotify or Bandcamp, whatever they want on their own time, or you can be listening now, certainly throughout this. I think the links are in the comments. Um, so we figured I'd show like some behind the scenes stuff, just like some little clips and things. Uh, so I am just going to show you now that uh, that part that we that, that I sampled from Jody singing. So if you are familiar with the work, you'll know that there's this at the very end. You just hear the word voice, which is Jody singing in four different voices. Um, <clears throat> and throughout there's this drone that happens. It sort of skips around. What it's doing is it's skipping around that that single sample. Um, so I'll play that sample for you, and then I'll, I'll show you this thing that I built in the program Max MSP that that skips around the voice like that that I sort of use to set up everything. Um, so let me share my screen here. Um, let's go with uh, do, 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 this too. Um, so actually, give me one other moment. I'm going to open up this audio first. And... Okay, let's do this guy first. So this is just that little sample that appears at the end. I'll turn it down a little so it's not super loud. So that's obviously the word voice. And um, like 98% of the instruments that you hear, the electronic accompaniment are taken from that that one sample. There's like a bass and a kick drum and stuff that are not from that, but but even the other percussion stuff is, is taken from that. Um, so I'll show you this little thing that I built in Max. Um, and this is super ugly. If those of you who, who use Max uh, know that like making your patches look good is a big part of <laughs> making Max patches. Uh, but that's only when it's for other people, I think. This is just for myself. So it looks completely ugly and I never thought I'd be sharing it publicly, but, but here you go. Um, so, uh, do, do, do. okay, so I have loaded in that clip and you can see that I built this little sequencer and this thing moves around like this. Basically it moves through the sample in these, all these different steps. So if I press it now, it moves through those different stages. And then this is the like sort of the vertical axis here is where it is in the sample. So uh, it'll start later in the sample. If I go like that, this would be sort of a backwards-esque thing. So that goes through backwards, and then I can sort of jump all around. 
And I made these presets that I ended up using as the basis of this drone. <laughs> this kind of thing. And I'm really interested in the, um, particularly in the word voice, the, the diphthong in it, how you go from aw, aw, e, e. So the pitch doesn't change, the, you know, syllable doesn't change, um, but the, you, you move a lot through the, the timbre uh, of it. So it goes from an O sound, a round sound to a more nasal sound. Um, and then I have other things in here that can, that can shift the pitch and change the amplitude uh, and all that. Um, so I, I basically imported that into the program logic and then uh, had that as my drone, set all that up and then added a bunch of different other sounds and put Jody's voice above it. Tim and Jed are saying that the Max MSP is the secret content that they're they're both here for. So okay. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Jody, um, kind of with that in mind, did you know that your voice was going to be manipulated in that way. Is it strange to hear your voice like that? Or I, I did, I did not know it. Um, I think in some ways, I, I was very reassured when I heard the first little demo of it because I was like, that is exactly the sound world I thought we might be in, but I didn't know how it would work for me. And the fact that I'm a part of it feels really nice, and it feels like of me and very much of Jacob. Um, so that that was that was really nice as. Uh, as as the first thing that I was hearing in in about maybe two years ago now almost, yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, what what else can I say about it? Well, I do think that that empathy aspect of that that you just said that's it's very of you, but also of Jacob is really strong um, and and comes out in the way also that you realized Dora's text and that th that's an element of what this this piece is all about um, and that that empathy, but there's something about it that's a little bit um, heavier than the way that we usually talk about empathy. Um, and I was wondering if you could maybe elaborate that on that a little bit more in, in going into Dora's text, what it was like to kind of sort through and, and figure out how you were gonna phrase it or how to get into the material in a deeper way because it's such a rich text. Yeah, you know, I think J Jacob, Jacob will, will We'll talk a bit of smack about his own singing, but but I, I, to his credit, and I'm sure he tweaks it a little bit. Uh, I, I do think he is a very musical performer. Whether he's you know always in tune with his singing, I, I'm not so sure. Um, but but I think there was a lot, even from his initial phrasing of things, he had a very specific idea of what the rhythm was in a way that made me feel really great to be like, I'm I'm a percussionist. I'm going to read that rhythm exactly the way you want it. And he's like, that's the, exactly the way I wanted it. Um, so I think in many ways, a lot of the work in terms of, or if not all of the work of setting the text was really done by, by Jacob to his, to his credit. So it made the text very accessible for me. Um, and I think that the text has, uh, it's a nice combination of sort of the type of rhythm and language and alliteration that I really like and I find like very sensual and pleasurable to sing and perform. And then also is much wordier than my own music. Hmm. Like I'll, I would, for this many minutes of music, I would have maybe a third of the text. Um, that's, that's really interesting. Cause like, you know, even having with Dora, how I had to cut down syllables so much, it's like still even a lot less. It's interesting. Yeah. And, and so it, it, I think initially was suddenly a little wordy for me, but in mm. a way that all of it felt very fun to move through um, mm. and, and, and almost always very easy. And, and Jacob was very accommodating in terms of like you were saying before of, ooh, this little tongue twister is just a little too fast for this phrase. What's another word that'll feel just as good? And there are a few phrases where I don't even remember the initial word, but where mm. literally just one word was replaced and it helped the music flow so much better. Um, it helped me be able to sing it and engage with it. Um, but it's, it's a really beautiful, extraordinary text that I, I'm, that has in it, in its own way, but through recording and, and performing it a little bit has become its own little ritual. Um, and so it, I, I feel while I'm singing it, that I am the, the text is feeding me kind of all my instructions for this ritual that I'm, that I'm going through, which is a wonderful way of, of making music.
Yeah, it's interesting you say that because it doesn't feel too fast. Like the text is very rich um, and the ritual of it, I think maybe kind of getting into it and, and being able to make all of it understandable is obviously a, an art. Um, but it's interesting the way, for me, the way that time feels in this piece, um, because the, the depth of the text and then it, it doesn't feel like it's moving that fast, um, but there's so much going on. Um, and, and that's, um, Dora, I wonder if you could talk about the kind of um, zoomed in time of the wound and some of those things in the text, um, if that kind of how you were thinking about time at all, or just what it was to think about inflicting wounds, um, and if that at all um, you know, was I, a part of your thinking about it. Yeah, I, I think um, I hadn't really thought about this, this uh, until now, but watching the way that Jacob sort of manipulates time um, in terms of his technology, I think maybe that influenced sort of how I was thinking emotionally, that idea of what if we could rewind, what if we could replay something um, and kind of go back and do something over again. Um, and so there's a kind of, I mean, for me, I think a lot of the, the imagery that I was using of sort of walking, walking backwards or making a door where there couldn't be a door, um, was sort of this this idea of both maybe both that technology but in a more general sense art being this catharsis or release of doing things we can't do in real life um, but then we know the song ends we know in a way it's kind of a false catharsis maybe mm -hmm. um, and I love the idea I mean of of the text and the music kind of traveling also across time and space as the three of us were were working on it. Um, it's really you know cool to think. I just just to think of Jody sort of embodying um, this text and this music and then kind of coming coming back through us. I just really love that that process and feel like that also kind of shaped some of my thinking about about time in this as well. Awesome. Really cool. I guess that um, we probably need to move on soon, but we have one uh, burning question from our fearless leader, <laughs> Judd, um, which is what is the trash can moment? We all need to know. Oh what? yeah, it's trash can. <laughs> yeah, trash cans at the at the very end of the piece um, that comes in. So it's in, for, for you music people out there, that's uh, all in a triple meter or compound meter at the end um, where the kick is on every three sixteenths. And I was like, okay, this is a cool way to end it. This is great, but like it didn't have enough umph in it. Um, and then Jody's, played the trash can at the end uh, and uh, played in a duple meter over that triple meter and bringing it back to the duple meter was like perfect having having that those polyrhythm uh, polymeter thing happening that was what brought it home so it's like the thing that you hear happen like a minute or two before the piece ends Nice. We should have sound checked the trash can Jody Oh this is a good plug let's plug Yeah you can uh, or you can tune into Bang on a Cans Marathon next month on August sixteenth. Um, I have I have yet to locate said trash can, but <laughs> you're shipping over from I Iceland. Be, exactly. <laughs> I, I will be making sure that I I'm we're we're doing a radio edit, so it's a little shorter. Um, and uh, I'll be playing uh, uh, the harpeggi and also at the at the end uh, some some trash can or another. So we'll 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 find out in a month. Well, any, uh, Dora, any current projects or writings that you have to share with uh, adoring fans? Well, <laughs> well, I will say uh, what I'm working on right now is a project uh, with Tupelo Press, which is an anthology called Four Quartets, uh, Poetry in the Pandemic. Um, and it's a bunch of different, I think maybe 16 different poets writing these 12 page folios from this moment in time. So maybe not all of them are explicitly pandemic related, but they're all coming out of this really bizarre and unprecedented time. Um, so I I, this is another experience where I feel like I'm working with other people at a distance and I'm really curious to see what, what they come up with as well. Um, so so that's, that's what's, what's on tap for me right now. Cool, well, and thank you both for- It'll oh, be sorry, released in the fall too, just uh, it'll be like late fall, early winter probably. Nice. I look forward to, to reading it. Um, well, th thank you both for Thanks, talking guys. about your work with Jacob. And we're going to do the change of the, over of the guard and invite uh, Greg in next, Greg Brounderville, who's our next poet slash victim 
uh, for the interviews. <laughs> yeah. um, thanks, Jody and Dora. Um, and I'd like to just say, uh, continuing, if people have questions that we didn't get to about uh, for, for Jody or Dora, feel free to continue to add them into the chat. And at the very end, we'll take general Q&As from everybody. Um, so hello. Hi, it's good to be here. <laughs> Welcome, Greg. <laughs> um, so could you tell me how you met Jacob and what your background is working with him or how much you've worked with him in the past? Have you guys worked together before? Yeah, we worked on Silver Threads. Um, I wrote the words for a piece called Jar and we had a great time with that. And so when Jacob got the commission from the LA Phil for a Ripple of the Sky, he contacted me and asked me whether I'd be interested in working with him again. And this proposition was really exciting to me for some of the reasons that Dora was hitting on earlier that the idea that the text and the music would be coming into being alongside each other and influencing each other appealed to my imagination. So I was excited to get to work on it and we had a great time collaborating. Um, SMU in Dallas where I teach um, brought Jacob in for several days and put him up so we could really be face to face in the, in the very early stages, which was super helpful. I think a lot of important things happened in the way of generating ideas during that time. Now, compared to your last project together, um, it seems like there were a lot more specifics in the subject matter of, of um, Ripple the Sky. Um, how was it um, having such, um, uh, or it, as a writer, do you like having constraints of subject or what was that like having these very specific um, kind of creative ideas related to uh, the content of the text? Well, there there weren't a huge number of constraints at the very beginning because what Jacob told me is that he was interested in doing a piece about um, Schumann's descent into madness. And, you know, we had some ideas that might we might involve images of water uh, versus drought. We knew we were going to be premiering this in LA, which was experiencing a drought at the time. And so that was it. And you can go in a lot of directions with that. I mean, that means lot. you're a good writer. That's a lot. That's a lot of restrictions. <laughs> so, when very early on, I mean, like the first day I was thinking about Schumann and really thinking about this project, I started sensing just at the intuitive level some kind of um, spiritual palimpsest, whereby I was sensing Ophelia, Shakespeare's Ophelia's presence behind Schumann's story. I think the attempted suicide in water, the um, the fact that he was having oral hallucinations and hearing an A sound like in his life made me think of that uh, line from Hamlet where uh, Ophelia is saying A non nani. And, and then, um, but, but it was very, it was kind of just a, a hunch. And when we started researching Schumann in this context, because I, I proposed this to, to Jacob, he said, yeah, let's think about this Ophelia Schumann connection. So we started researching and we found that Schumann, who was obsessed with, with or he, he was an obsessive list maker late in his life. I think he was using lists to kind of keep his mind together as he was descending into madness. He listed uh, female characters in Shakespeare and he listed Shakespeare plays and Ophelia and Hamlet were both conspicuously missing from this list. And at first that seemed like a, a, a bad indication for, for the little hunch that I had, but I think actually it was there was a sense in which he was avoiding her because she's kind of like a twin, like a, she mirrored him in interesting ways. And so we found out later after deciding on this construct that he had written a song about Ophelia. And on the day that he was taken away to the asylum, he had a bouquet of flowers and was handing them out to people, um, echoing that scene in, in Hamlet. And I started thinking about this, way in which he he was beautifying or ceremonializing this moment of great pain and sorrow and in in a way i was thinking of the piece as an extension um or or, or an, an a way of honoring that that impulse on his part of aestheticizing but not denying the pain of this horrible moment when he goes away to the asylum so had you already done a lot of research about Schumann or did, is this something that you got super into from knowing that you were going to do this collaboration? Um, I 
had been interested in his music only in a kind of passing kind of casual way. Um, and so I, I just started reading about it more and more once Jacob proposed the idea. He's one of the more um, uh, kind of text heavy composers that we have in an interesting way because he did a lot of his own writing. Um, yeah. And so there's so much strange material in this sort to kind of draw upon of his own writings and his own sorting through literature and in an interesting way, um, but I, I love the the details that you drew out of that for this text. Um, the the A thing that you mentioned, and and some of the little things that um, that feel more uh, uh, like they're the the kind of the threads or the the detailed stitching that puts mm -hmm. their stories together in a way that's not as obvious. And and I think that's what I find really beautiful about this piece. And Jacob, you've said before that it, it is about these things and it's also not, um, you know, that um, as you were writing it, this, this kind of, this, the, the concept for the piece brought the two of you together to kind of putting these pieces together. But then as you were writing it, um, it kind of, it has its own, a lot of this water, more of the water elements and these other things come out in it than as much of the craziness. Or what would you say to that, Jacob? Or I guess, yeah, I guess our hope is that all, all of that stuff is in there and it can also exist outside of, outside of the world of Schumann and Ophelia as well. <clears throat> and has larger implications and everything. Um, yeah. I will say like on the specific text, uh, I had this image that when we started that we were going to take a lot of Schumann, because you mentioned the thing about him writing, that we we're going to take a lot of his writing and incorporate it uh, along with Hamlet, you know, as Shakespeare's writing and Hamlet um, and Ophelia's lines. And then when we started reading it, at, it, was, it actually was just like really cheesy. It was like, yeah. like 19th century, <laughs> like, behold the mountain blossom in front of me. And I was like, this is like, I want that same feeling, but like not the, the cheese thing. So Greg did an amazing job of like having that sort of florid world in a way, but like like the sort of imagery and, and stuff that, that we liked, but it's also a little weirder and not, yeah, not quite as cheesy as I would say. Yeah, so one, I mean, you get the th essence of it. Go ahead, Greg. And one fun thing about that is we took a page out of Schumann's book and uh, I started making lists from his letters. Uh, <laughs> so I would just pull phrases out of context because in context, they were a little on the kind of cheesy yeah. nonsense country side. And so I would just pull out all these phrases and make these long lists. And when you do that, you kind of dislocate them from their grammatic, grammatical habitats. And you get these surprising kind of pastiche sort of collage like um, uh, you get that type of vibe and you can put things together into a pastiche that sounds nothing like Schumann's letters, but reflect something of the imagery and texture and emotional flavor. Beautiful. Well, actually, why don't we listen to um, or, or watch the video now and be able to listen to some of your text. Um, and for all of you uh, watching along, if you want to grab your popcorn, we're going to do a 15 minute uh, little video now. And um, please take the time if you'd like to think about ask questions. Um, and if you don't have a water bottle or something to cheers with, we will do a toast at the end for Jacob. So you can feel free to grab that. So very end, right? hand it over the, to- This whole thing? At the very end, right? At, the, at very the very end. end. Very end, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so just a little intro on this. Uh, so the original commission was to write music, but also create a video, uh, which uh, I'm a total amateur at. Um, and we ended up doing this shoot in the White Sands National Monument uh, in New Mexico because uh, we wanted some place that would seem kind of kind of otherworldly. Um, and so this this video is supposed to be displayed during the performance. And the piece is about 17 minutes long. The first two minutes, the visuals are actually dark. Uh, so I'm going to start it two minutes in when things get a little more continuous and play from there until the end. And I think in the credits, uh, I mean, in the comments, there'll be a list of credits of everyone involved in the video. Um, okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna open this up. Boop, boop. Daisies. <laughs> 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 
and long purples There's rosemary that's for surrender That's for thoughts. That cares for no for you. And columbines and a daisy and a moon.
Kipperstein at the end, I think. Yes, that last clip. you recognize that. <laughs> yes, shout thank out. you, Marina, for that. Yes, of course. Uh, we should also shout out for the singer Theo Blackman, who we had, whose name we haven't even mentioned yet. Yeah, could we, Theo? Can we bring you in for uh, interrogation now? Um, so, so beautiful. It's really wonderful to thank to hear you. you sing this, and I've I've listened to it a a bunch of times now from from going through the the 
kind of writing the notes and working with Jacob and um, it's so um, it's so smooth the way you go through this in a way that that brings out some of this um, almost depression in the text um, even though it's really beautiful and I'm kind of mm -hmm. wondering what what your approach was to singing the text and to um, kind of relating to those elements of the themes in it. Well, the text is really interesting because it's very hard to get. It's very strange. It's very much like this schizophrenic depression, almost like even in, even just hearing the words. And I, there's so many words in this text that I've never sung ever. <laughs> can, we, can we get Greg back here on video, by the way, so we can see his reaction to... Uh... <laughs> to, to all these wonderful comments and that is wonderful i just think that's fantastic <laughs> because it's not your normal you know i love you and i wish you were here or something um mm -hmm. it's just these every word is just this weird plans and it's like what um so it, it it i think it conveys that sort of sense of um that, that, that sort of uh, sensual idea of being uh, disconnected and having these weird worlds inside of you um, to me, it was just, it, it took a lot of probing and a lot of singing to really get into it, I have to say. Very much like a really good poem takes time <laughs> to understand. Uh, and you might you, never understand it. Yeah. Did you feel like it affected your mood performing it and trying to yes. record it so many times? Yes, very much because I didn't have, like I said, I haven't sung a lot of these words, so I have no emotional catalog for any of these words. It's really interesting. You're singing in a language that you're familiar with, but not the words. <laughs> it's great. Or the phrases or these, what you were talking about, the weird grammar and, all, you know, all that stuff. Um, and then, you know, uh, Jacob's setting is so beautiful and also really disturbing and disjointed. And mm -hmm. it's fantastic, you know. What's interesting, I, I observed it once again, is that I'm what I'm doing with my voice is actually mostly acoustic in the beginning i'm actually doing electronic mimicry or i'm, I'm singing like i'm an electronic instrument in the beginning with the, all the stuttering that i'm doing physically then almost like it, it the machine is taking over or the, the you know it then in the end more and more my of my voice gets distorted and and um processed it's yeah almost it's like almost I'm like the, my body the, more and more mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, and the, no, I was going to say the strings are also doing that um, in the in the layers of of all of us. That some of them yeah. are techniques that we're sounding like we're glitchy, and then some of them are actually being glitchy. And um, if you don't mind me asking, um, this is a time when a, a lot of musicians are having a hard time losing a lot of work and and really feeling. Uh, these things of of kind of wondering what their worth is and dealing with a lot of depression and I was wondering if um you had a thought about just kind of as somebody who has to so much be in a text like this and get used to performing it or for yourself how do you bring yourself out of that or what are some strategies that you have to be able to give such a compelling performance or to really be in that emotion and then be healthy and step out of it or um, yeah. I have, I don't have a one answer uh, thing, but it's been working for me recently. I've, I've had a really low moment um, in all of this because like you said, and you feel completely obsolete. Like I signed up for this music thing to perform and to be in front of people with people. Um, but what has helped me strangely is to record right now. I'm uh, hmm. doing a few recording exchanges and projects and developing music with other musicians and composers and it really makes me feel like there's an afterlife to what i'm doing right now so it's not just treading and teaching a, a bunch of zoom lessons and zoom workshops but the, to really continue working on something and that sort of feels good right now it took me you know two months to really find that sweet spot but that's why i'm, I'm very i'm suddenly very busy and very excited to be doing stuff and that hasn't happened nice. yeah awesome. and yeah. any any extra musical things i think as a singer you probably think more about your health than than some of us uh squirrely instrumentalists do but <laughs> what are some do you 
Um, I've been roller skating in my apartment. Um, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but, seriously? Um, yeah, seriously. Yeah. So no, just working out in my apartment um, and uh, just what everybody else is doing. I think to stay fit and to feel a sense of body. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, I think some people, if they haven't ever had to go through a period like this where they were injured or out of work or had something, um, forget about those things, about the like connecting with people like you're with recording or just the basic of staying healthy and how yeah. much that helps to move through this. So I, I really appreciate your generosity and sharing that with, uh, with everybody and kind of how you yeah, deal with it's, that. Anyone's guess what works for you. I think everyone will find that out along the way. Um, mm -hmm. As a musician, you constantly looking in the mirror, you know, for in, in doing this, like, what, what am I good for? You know, what am I doing here? I'm, I'm not performing. I'm not creating music. So I'm, you know, I, I found that that is recording and creating is helping me get out of this feeling of uselessness. Mm -hmm. I did a recent uh, live performance on, I'm, I'm going to not go into the, details of the complications of the ethernet and how we did it but we i actually played live with somebody online um and the feeling of playing live with somebody was so overwhelming after two and a half months of quarantine mm. that i had forgotten how great it is even play. even over screen even over screen you felt oh, even over screen <clears throat> it's like you're being in a studio and you're just closing your eyes and you're playing with somebody that communication i didn't know was as important until i had it back I was like, oh, oh my God, that's what I've been missing. It mm. really shook me up. Um, anyway, so yeah, I, I look forward to coming back to that. Yeah, uh, well, it, and it, is that those might be things that come out in the in the fall or things that are just purely creative fun projects? Or I don't know, but they're really pushing me. The, the stuff that is happening in a bubble, and, and Jacob, you can talk to that. When you're in your little bubble and creating stuff, there's a safety that you feel that is sometimes missing when you're rushing or when you're writing a commission or you're doing something uh, with other people. But I feel like I can try anything and everything and pushing myself to try stuff I've never done before. Um, and that's really exciting right now. But Jacob. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I mean, I think that that's, uh, that's part of the composer life, I guess. I don't have this performer side of the life that you have. So uh, I'm, I guess I'm more used to that, but. But I do I have realized that I rely on performance for, for the social aspect, and everything as well. Yeah. So I mean, we miss. Words. Yeah, <laughs> we miss we miss hearing you guys play and yeah. and everything. So, yeah. Well, we should probably move on to our next yeah. piece. Yeah. But we'll have Theo Here. come back in that one. Okay. Thank you both. Thank you, Theo. Yeah. Thank you, Greg. Thank you for writing such a beautiful piece, and thank you, Greg, for those miraculous yeah. words. That uh, yeah, beautiful. Incredible. Thanks, guys. Well, kind of transitioning to that is a really lovely connection, actually, if we can get Zach to come on now. Um, the interesting thing about the last track that we're going to talk about, hi, Zach, um, hey. and some of the, the thread of all of this with creative and collaboration with people is that your task as a poet was slightly different from the other two in that you were tasked with Kind of helping to pull the whole album together. Um, these two really big works that um, Jacob had been working on. Of course, his voice is so strong as a composer, but um, in order to keep the thread of the album together, he asked you to kind of help tie things together. Could you talk a little bit about that process and how you guys work together? Sure, sure. Thank you. It's so good to be here with all of you, and congratulations, Jacob, on the release. Um, one well. thing. I love about Jacob's music, and if you haven't heard it before, you're getting a sense of it now, is a concept like synthesis is inseparable from a concept like transformation or dissolution. So as we first started to talk about how to pull things together, uh, the task was how to do so in a way that also shows them dispersing or merging with other landscapes that they are creating as they big bang outward. Um, Dora used that beautiful phrase, false catharsis, and I think that we wanted a sense of a false catharsis that could also be comforting um, or serene. Um, so, you know, that happens through the kind of what we, we were using the word modular through particulars of variation and refrain musically and lyrically that echo back to other pieces, also project forward 
into new dimensions. And you hear them come apart and together through Ashley's cello work, through the voices coming together from the from different places in the album and through the greater interplay. Um, so that's, I mean, that's when I think of it now, when I listen to that, what I think, what is this synthetic uh, node? And I think if, if the art that I love is in some ways undergirded by being about suffering and time, there's ways in which the lyrics of the first two tracks foreground suffering of mental anguish or of animal uh, or our imagining of animal anguish. And maybe this last one emphasizes time and how it metabolizes us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think, well, why don't we bring Ashley on anyway? Um, but I think the, the fact that you were working with time and that um, Ashley is somebody who has collaborated with Jacob so much since we were in grad school and has this history of time and working with him and knowing a lot of his work so well. Um, I think that there's just the fact that you specifically, Ashley, were the, the string sound on this track um, is really beautiful personal aspect of this thing about time that Zach was talking about, just that you do have a sense of Jacob's compositional time. You do have a sense of this language that he writes in. Um, and I was wondering, Ashley, did you know some of the texts that you that you were playing under for any of this? Or what was the process of how you helped Jacob with recording these? First of all, hi, everybody. Hi, Ashley. I'm in such a blissed out mood right now. <laughs> <laughs> your camera, your, it's probably your camera. That camera is good job. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Good setup. Um, so no, I I didn't um, like a lot of of pieces. When you're you're just a you're a cog in the wheel. You're a, you're a part of it, right? So we began. Jacob was just sending me these arpeggios and asking for some different um, some improvising of sound effects on the on the instrument. You know, at the bridge and with harmonics and overtones and glissandi, uh, etc. Um, so, so it started out with me just kind of pa us passing those back and forth and him making me sound so beautiful. Um, you know, these, these arpeggios are kind of ridiculously difficult because I'm covering a, a large, uh, amount of, of geography here from like the beginning to the end of the fingerboard, uh, and, and, and going up the series, but having every note finger, they're not really harmonics until the very end. Uh, and, and we got very specific, you know, about um, where to gliss, where not to gliss. And so it's funny that you can hear, and I was listening to it this morning thinking, oh gosh, this is like so beautiful, but, but started out as this like really small um, one tree in a forest that I really couldn't see. Uh, and, and on top of it, just sweating bullets and having all sorts of anxiety. Um, even in the test recordings, not to mention like the final recording where I'm just like, don't fuck up, don't fuck up, don't fuck up, <laughs> from one note to I, the next. I still <laughs> maintain, I heard you did it all in one take, no edits. <laughs> oh, yes. oh, yes. Well, let that be the, let that be the, the legend. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in the recorded <laughs> release show. It must be true. Yeah. But then, you know, so as the, the bits and pieces come in and then you hear the text and you start to hear how it all comes together, but really not, I mean, this is one of those albums and projects where um, I always talk about this, how a lot of the times we we have a piece of music, we there's no recording that exists, um, no electronics or backing tracks, and you learn it and you perform it a bunch, you tour it even, and then you might go into the studio and record it. Well, this is one of those backwards process um, where you're in the studio first and you're building something from the ground up, which is really magical. I think, because then, and especially when there are other people involved and you just keep getting more and more excited and there's more and more energy and suddenly it comes together and it's all finished and it's like, oh, wow, you know, so. Yeah, I think especially with this one, just the, obviously the amount of thought that, that Zach, that you put into really knowing the other two poems and texts really well. And then, as I said, Ashley, your history working with Jacob even if you didn't know what the context of this was, I think just kind of um, speaks to a little bit about what we've been talking about of what everyone's missing right now, but just this um, trusting your collaborators, having a team that you really, really trust that you can try things out with, that you can know will really see your vision and, and put it forward. Um, and Jacob, I don't know if you wanted to talk a little bit about kind of, uh, was it really, 
clear that you just wanted to use cello or was it, was it um, specifically that you knew you wanted to use Ashley for this or what mm. was the, the yeah, aspect Yeah, good of question. That? So, I mean, I'll just say just generally about the collaborators, I have increasingly relied on collaborators to write my own work um, with this piece more than any other. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was just noticing as you were speaking now that I've relied on all of you also to be part of this release party. So <laughs> like it was, it's, I want you to be part of it because I like you all and it, it would be, it felt like it was awesome to have you here, but I also totally relied on you to like help me through this thing. Cause I, cause I couldn't do it on my own. Um, but anyway, so uh, yeah. So for, for this piece, I, I figured that I, you know, I wanted this sort of synthesis idea and actually, um, thought that it would be good to incorporate music from the first two pieces as well. So there's moments from Ripple the Sky in here, musical moments and moments from uh, from Expiation as well. Um, so instrumentation-wise, we have Jody singing and both Jody and Theo singing, uh, who we'll get to in a moment. Um, and then the Ashley, I, I wanted to have some of that string sound from Ripple the Sky in it. Um, and I took the drone like about four minutes into ripple the sky there's this low c drone that starts uh in that on the cello um and i felt like i had more more stuff i could do with that so i started the piece by writing this and this i don't know if ashley remembers this but this dates back to like i think t when i first started writing ripple the sky like five years ago and um i was just workshopping stuff with you and you were just fooling around with the cello uh you know i was just like trying different techniques and you were just playing an open c and sometimes the uh, you know, other uh, G string as well. And, and just like messing around with where you're basically placing the bow and just like getting strange harmonics and all this stuff. And and you were like, this is sometimes the coolest thing that you can do. And I was like, yeah, wow, you are right. So I used that in Ripple the Sky. And then I was like, and I can use that even more. Um, so you'll hear at the beginning, I'll do a little under the hood thing again for my, for my logic project. And I'll sort of play these moments that you can hear um, coming out of the other pieces. So I'll share the screen now, share computer sound. Okay. Um, so this is the this is my logic project here, and this is um, the drone that happens at the beginning. That's pretty quiet, I think. And so this is just the the same. This is actually this. I did have her record this bottom part, I think, but it's basically just like the same thing I used from Ripple the Sky that comes in about four minutes into it. Um, and then I wanted these. I felt like it needed something very delicate above it. So I had these cello arpeggios. Uh, and then the sounds that happen throughout Ripple the Sky, these sort of aural hallucinations, um, which by the way, it's worth giving a shout out to Andrew Norman and you, Anne, for this because um, your Shaken Not Stuttered website where you go through all the different string noises, I totally use that for Ripple the Sky. So so thank you yeah, for that. He made, me, he made me practice. He was like, go learn all these. <laughs> From Anne's website. And I, I forgot about that. Great. <laughs> uh, right so so i made so i made so actually <laughs> no no it's great it's it's a great i mean it took a lot of people to make that happen um so uh yeah so i had ashley record all these different noisy sounds um and then i also had her let's see boom, boom, boom. um sorry these kinds of things um and i think actually i probably just like let things record or you were recording on your end I think right you just kind of let things go and you were fooling around with different sounds um, and then I remember we got together later trying to recreate some of them and I had no idea how I had achieved that sound <laughs> that's we true spend more time kind of kind of finding it again yeah yeah I forgot about that that's a good call um and this um audio let's see can i bring this in maybe it's somewhere here no whatever i won't play it but um there's one part where where ashley was moving through a glissando like a harmonic glissando uh and i was like i like that sound but you know it's not exactly what i want so then i just slowed it down to a third of its speed so like it says at 300 there for three times longer um so that's this sound so you get the sound of the cello it's like a noisy cello sound but it's also, see, it sounds a little artificial because it's slowed down to an extent that a cello probably wouldn't do. I mean, actually, I should ask you this, Ashley. Does, like, if you just played it at a third of the speed, would it sound like that? Or does that sound different than a cello? I think there would sound? be similar characteristics, but no. I mean, you can hear just kind of, there's a more woofiness to it and, and a different timbre, um, I think. Cool. You can get the slow, yeah, the way that... but you can't get that, that same, um, uh, it's kind of, I would say an earthiness or something to it. Yeah, I think the transition of the harmonics, the, the mm. that timbral aspect is something that's that's the harder to 
to transition through. And so you're getting, you're stretching out the part that the is more yeah. fragile and that's yeah. what makes it sound really magical. Yeah. Awesome. That's a, that's a great call. And it's almost like you're a string player that you knew that. And that's cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Um, so I want to show what, what are the little thing um, at the end, this was like originally a large part of my, the original sketch, but um, at the end I have this uh, thing come in, I guess there are a couple of things to show here. Um, at the end I have this thing come in that is, uh, was actually the drone from Expiation, but I put a ton of reverb on it. So uh, if I turn the reverb off here and turn the automation off, you can hear. This is actually the drone that I use in Jody's voice in Expiation, um, pitched down a step. Uh, so I was like taking the actual, some of the actual material that I had had. And then this moment here that also comes in at the end is uh, the fast strings at the end of Ripple the Sky that are playing in 30 second notes but I put a bunch of distortion on them and put an auto filter on them and everything. Um, so I think for me, it was like a way, this is often how I work in composition that I, uh, I need to steal from other things in order to create my piece. Like it's really hard for me to start from the blank page. And uh, sometimes it's my own work as it is in here. Sometimes it's like stealing stuff from Andrew Norman, as I, as I mentioned earlier. Um, but uh, I think I, I, it helps me to have that sort of thing, thing to begin with and, and take from. Oh, well, um, actually, now that we're getting close to 9.15, could we just bring everybody back? Um, yeah, with cool. Theo and Jody and Dora and Greg. And um, uh, I'll, I see one question about the video in the costumes, um, cool. about what the costumes from the video were inspired by. Yeah, so that was um, Kate Fry, a wonderful costume designer. Um, and uh, yeah, I wish she could answer that question, but I will. So uh, we haven't talked too much about the detail of Schumann, but um, when he did attempt to commit suicide, he uh, it was a rainy day in February and he walked down, he lived near the Rhine River and he um, walked down to the river uh, in just his bathrobe, he basically like stumbled out of his house and, and walked down the river. So that's, he's essentially wearing his, uh, you know, the, the pajamas or the, the bathrobe that he would be wearing. Um, and then for Ophelia, which is a really phenomenal, phenomenal outfit, um, flowers play a big role. I think Greg may have mentioned that. Yeah, Greg did mention the flowers. Flowers play a big role in this piece. Um, and we like the idea of having, or Kate especially came up with this idea of having her have a head of flowers. So it's this sort of strange alien fits with a sort of weird out there world um i think she has ropes and stuff too like she's when she is found dead she's c covered in these flowers and in and at the bottom like all muddy and grime and stuff and greg maybe you can speak more of that than i can but um i, I think that she's like underneath all of this and uh that was that was the inspiration behind that cool um I don't see any other questions for now. I know we have a little bit of a lag, but if there are any other questions, if you want to write them in either the Facebook or the, um, the YouTube chat so we can take a look. Um, but otherwise, uh, Jacob, did you want, did you have any closing words about the album? Uh, and, uh, not so much. I, I just wanted to thank you all for being a part of this. I've, I've sort of already mentioned about how much collaboration is, is important for my work, but um, I really am so honored and, and happy to be working with all of you on this. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, it's great to have this product out there. And thank you also for everyone who's been watching. And uh, we will we will tour this live at, at, at some point to various cities. We will make it happen. Um, so I, I'm going to raise a glass. I don't know if any other people have glasses, but... Well, I'd like to, to say to, to Jacob, congratulations on your awesome album. Thank you very much. Also, I have to say, I felt a little uncomfortable with how much praise you guys are heaping on me. So <laughs> man, like throughout, I'm like, yeah, that's, that's all very nice. Throw some insults. You know, <laughs> yeah. Can you, if you want to throw some insults. <laughs> it turns into a roast. Yeah. Now that, that would, the drinks are yeah, out. that would be good. Forget questions from the audience. If you could just, if you could just roast, that'd be great. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, thank you all very much. We, but yeah, we you're you're such a supportive colleague, Jacob, and um, it's it's really a pleasure to work with you. And uh, we're all really happy to to be here with you to celebrate this. And we'd love to all be giving you a big hug in person. But yeah. um, w without that, it's so cool to see everyone's faces and 
and to hear um, the results of this. And you've helped all of us through other periods of, of getting through this with being able to collaborate with you. So um, you. it's a it's a beautiful moment for this to come out in other ways. And thanks again for having us all. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye, guys. Congrats, Jacob. Cool. Congratulations. Hey. <laughs> all right. How do we stop this stream? Let's cut it off. Cut it off. All right. <laughs>